What's the S stand for? It's not an S. On my world, it means hope. Well, here it's an S. How about... Super... Excuse me. So I decided that since the Snyder Cut of Justice League is due to come out in this amount of time since the recording of this video, I decided uh, what better way to examine that film uh, as a whole uh, than by revisiting uh, the two films that came before, I guess two and a half, but we'll get to that in a, in a while. Man of Steel, the one that started this whole entire very convoluted and messy like cin cinematic universe. Uh, yeah. Man of Steel was directed by Zack Snyder, stars Henry Cavill, Amy Adams, Michael Shannon, and many other people. Uh, and this is a new telling of the origin of Superman as we see him from childhood to teenage years to adult years. Uh, as he dons his powers, uh, learns where he came from, and has to face uh, Zod, who wants to destroy the Earth to bring Krypton back. And so many things in between. And this is one of the most frustrating superhero films that I've ever seen in my life. Ah! Now, I know there are many, many people out there that love this movie, that love Snyder's uh, movies in general. I personally don't hate Snyder's films. I think that he's a really great director. I just think that a lot of his films, especially his DC films, have many problems. Uh, more with just how the story structure and everything, but I'll get into that later. But uh, personally, my favorite film of his is 300. I really like that one. Then after that, it's Watchmen. Uh, then, I guess... I guess Man of Steel, then Batman vs Superman, uh, then Legend of the <laughs> then Legends of the Guardians. That's a that's a weird movie. And then I still have to see his version of Dawn of the Dead uh, and the uh, Snyder Cut, but that's not out yet. Look, fans of this movie, fans of Cavill Superman, fans of just Snyder in general. Look, I get it. You're allowed to like what you like. I always say like what you like, but when there are very clear problems and very easy problems to solve. Why do we not try to solve them? Why we instead go for complacency and just say, sure, that's great, I love it. Like, the problems of this movie are so very obvious and can be very easily fixed that it's just kind of mind-boggling that no one said anything during, like, the writing process or anything. And I'll get into specifics as to why, but... God, every time I see this movie, it frustrates the hell out of me to no end. Like, it's not a bad movie. It's a frustrating movie, and there's a difference. But no, it's not a bad movie. Don't think that I think that this is a bad movie, because it's not. But god damn it, it's so frustrating. So before I get into the problems that I have with this movie, uh, let's talk about some of the positives. Hans Zimmer's score. Good lord, this is one of his best scores. And, like, it is a score that rivals the original films, uh, not just in, like, its theme, but the actual score itself. Like, this... This is fucking awesome. I love the score. Why do people not talk about it more? It is, it's very good. I, I love it. I really love the cinematography that Snyder went for with this. He went with more of a handheld, more dramatic uh, kind of cinematography style than what we are accustomed to with his films. And it makes sense because a lot of the story of what he's trying to do really goes for more of a drama kind of feel. So I really did like and I did appreciate uh, that difference of style. Uh, the action. Action was great. While there are definitely story problems with the action, uh, it's done really well. You really get a good sense of like, yes, these this is what would happen if uh, multiple Kryptonians fought each other. Like, that's good. I like it. It's done well. Casting. I absolutely love the casting. I'll get into Superman uh, in a bit. But like everyone, everyone is just fantastic. Uh, Michael Shannon is the best part of this movie as General Zod. His casting is perfect. His performance is perfect. Uh, the way he's written is fantastic. Like, good job. Good job. The prologue on Krypton uh, is the best part of the movie. Uh, it's engaging. Uh, it's easy to understand characters' motivations. Uh, it's very different from the original, so you don't really have to compare it at all to the original film. It really stands on its own. It's a great introduction uh, in about 20 minutes or so, but like I wanted to see more of it, but we don't. And that sucks, but like it's the best part of the movie, and I love it. After that first 20-ish minutes, though, that that's, that's where the problems start to arise. <laughs> Alright, so I want to talk about, really, the story of this. Because the story itself is not bad, but the way that it's presented and written, uh, it's just like, it's kind of like a puzzle. Like, But there's pieces missing, there's some pieces that end up in different spots than they're supposed to be, there's some that just like aren't correct, and then there's some that are just missing entirely. 
it's very weird. Like, if you look at this film and Batman Begins, like, there are very... There's a lot of similarities between the two of them. And, like, it's clear that Snyder wanted to take inspiration from that. And he went so far as to get Nolan to be a producer and a co-story writer for the film. And even got uh, Batman Begins screenwriter David S. Goyer to write this film. So it's clear he wanted to take that kind of approach that Nolan took with Batman. But apply it to Superman and make it more uh, grounded and realistic. Which I am perfectly fine with. That's a very interesting and a very different thing to do. Especially for a character like Superman. To go that deconstruction route to really explore, like, what the kind of psyche of this kind of character would be if you really like take tear it apart and like really look at the bits and pieces and there's parts of what he wants to do here especially like in the first 30 minutes after uh, after the Krypton prologue, um, and we see him, like, in flashbacks between present and past. Uh, when he's a kid, and we see him, like, getting his powers for the first time, when he's trying to, uh, figure out, like, should he save people or should he not? Like, that stuff is good. That's a really good and good foundation to, like, start all of this on. But the problem is, is that it's only 10 minutes. Where Batman Begins had, like, the first, like, 30 to 45 minutes dedicated to exploring his past and what, like, drew and what made him become the person that we see in the present, Man of Steel only offers about 10 minutes of it. 10! That, that's not enough, Zach. We, we, need a, we need a bit more. Just because people have seen Smallville and seen the original movie doesn't mean that they understand who this version of the character is. No matter it, what version of the character, you have to establish, like, what that version is like. And you can either do that through flashbacks to the past, um, or showing it starting from the past, or do, like, what the MCU did with Spider-Man. You give enough, uh, information, uh, for the audience to understand what this version of like and how he stands apart from the, from the others that came before him. But here, you give us tiny bits in the past, but in the present, we don't know anything about what this version of him is. Like at all like it's kind of mind-boggling like how poorly written superman is in this like i'm sorry i'm sorry fans of cavill superman but he is so poorly written it's kind of astounding and look i have nothing against cavill being cast as superman i think he's a fantastic choice not only is he a great actor but he's a great choice for superman he get he has a physique down he has the look down like he looks like superman and i would love to see him in in a better written superman film but that is just not this film. Throughout the entire film, people either tell him what he's supposed to do or what he's not supposed to do and who he's supposed to be. And then he has no personality to speak of whatsoever. You see characters like Spider-Man or Iron Man or Captain America or Thor. Like, they have clear, distinct personalities. Hell, even every version of Batman has a personality. What's his personality in this? Being as dry as a dry piece of wood? Yeah, that's an analogy I'm going to use. Like... It's, there's nothing to him. He has no charm. He has no personality. Like, he's just completely barren the entire movie. We don't even learn why he's going on his, I guess, spirit quest to find who he is. Like, it's never explained what it is. No, there's not one hint ever given showing him in his present, like, going from place to place, from job to job, like, from town to town. Like, we never learn or see why this is happening. It's just happening, and we're supposed to understand what it's supposed to be. Like... Again, this is what I'm talking about when I'm saying pieces are missing. Like, that's a clear piece that's missing. That, like, just, like, one line of dialogue could have fixed it. But there was no line of dialogue explaining it. So just kind of, like, figure it out. <laughs> the rest of the story, like, is fine. Like, it's nothing, like, too amazingly deep or complex. Yeah, there's ideas presented uh, by Zod about, like, you know, do you save this world or do you save um, the world that you were born on? But in doing so, you would sit, you would destroy the world that you arrived on. So Clark would have to either destroy Earth to save Krypton or he would doom Krypton forever but keep the people of Earth alive. Again, that's a really cool and a really interesting idea. But again, because Superman is as dry as a piece of dry wood, yeah, I'm gonna use that analogy again, it doesn't matter because we don't see any like growth at all throughout the film as to him questioning like does this world belong to me should i be here at all or like with krypton like we don't ever see like any interaction between that and also zod if you want superman to be on your side maybe don't in your hallucinations show him on a like you know field of skulls and bones that kind of would defeat the purpose of wanting his help like again weird pieces of a puzzle here guys also I, I need to go on a tangent about this. John Kent. 
what the hell? Throughout the entire film, he constantly goes back and forth saying, maybe you should share your powers, maybe you should, but you're also going to save the world, but also maybe don't save the world. Like, he constantly goes back and forth between this thinking and ideology. It's just like, pick one and stick with it. No wonder why Superman has no personality when he's adult, because you don't allow him to have a personality as an adult. When you keep saying, do something, but also don't do something, but maybe you should do it, but also maybe you shouldn't do it, it's confusing as hell, not just to Clark, but to the audience as well. And, like, I get that Snyder wanted him to have this kind of thinking that it's just, like, because, like, Superman is Superman, he doesn't know the answers. But stick with that. Stick with a, I don't know what you should do. Stick with your gut. Do what you believe is the right thing to do. Something like that. Don't say, drown the kids. I know that's not what he said, but essentially that's what he said. But then he follows it up with, I don't know, then you're gonna save the world someday, but also don't show your powers. Like, pick one and stick with it! It's not difficult to write characters, guys! John's death is so stupid. It's so stupid. I'm sorry, guys. It's it's not emotional in the slightest. Having him sacrifice himself to save a dog, but not let Clark just either go save the dog with, like, lightning speed like that, where no one would really notice at all saving a dog or John, like, at all. It could be, like, a Spider-Man 2 thing. Like, you know, he saved the people on the train, but his mask was off, but they kept, like, a vow of silence, essentially, between all of them that they weren't going to reveal who he was. Like, you could have had a very similar thing here, but no. Because we need to have John dying and Superman learn a very confusing lesson about saving people but not saving people. And, like, what? It doesn't make sense. I hate it. Just, it's stupid. Just move on to the next thing. The romance between Lois and Superman is so, so bare minimum. They have, like, three conversations, then they make out, and then apparently they're in love, I guess. But, like, why? Like, I get that Cavill is, like, good-looking and very muscular, Amy Adams, but, like, what what's his character? Like, why do you find that attractive aside from his being attractive? Especially follows in B BVS. Like, I'm so confused. Why is this a romance? Why is this thing happening? What? Why, why is this here? Like, what? <laughs> Even, like, the Iron Man movies built up the romance between Tony and Pepper better through three movies, but they can't even get it right in this one movie. What? It's... <sighs> I said these films frustrate me. This film frustrates the hell out of me. Oh, another part of a tangent that I just remembered. Uh, so back to Superman's character... Um, and how poorly written he is because he's constantly going on because he doesn't know what he's supposed to do whether he's supposed to save people or not save people we see him in the beginning saving people multiple times and yet he still questions should he save people why is he questioning this complex character i don't know and then also around the 45 minute mark is when he gets his superman suit which also how does this ship have a suit perfectly tailored to his size of muscle like I can have suspension of disbelief for a lot of things, but, like, that's a very specific thing. But anyways, so when he gets his suit, that's supposed to be the moment of when he realizes what he's supposed to be and what he's supposed to do, and yet, after that, he continues to question what he's supposed to do! That's like if in Iron Man, if after the whole beginning, when he realizes that he shouldn't make weapons, he stops making weapons, and then five minutes later, he starts making weapons, and then starts complaining about what he's supposed to do. Does he keep making weapons, or does he not? It makes everything that came before pointless! But, because this film is already so confused as to what it's supposed to do, like, it doesn't know what message it's trying to send, so the audience is left even more confused afterwards! Does he care? Does he not? I don't know! <laughs> The action scenes. Again, while they're done very well, um, from a story and character perspective, um, Superman, why do you let so many people die? Again, I know that he saved some people. Like, I get that. And, like, it's a very tough situation for him to save people. Again, I get that. But why can't you not take the danger away from the people? You keep bringing the danger back to the people. Superhero 101, you try to get the danger away from the people. It's, again... Not a hard thing to understand, but I guess because Snyder just wants to see buildings go boom, people have to die. In the final battle in Metropolis, oh lord, there's like, there's one part that just continues to piss me off years after I saw it the first time. Zod kicks a gas tank to Superman, rather than just like stick out his finger 
to stop it, he leaps over it and lets it blow up an entire parking garage behind him, probably killing dozens of people inside! Like, what the fuck, bro? <laughs> try to either save the people or try to take the danger away from the people, and yet he keeps bringing Zod back to the people, and this is a problem that would for some reason continue in BVS despite that being what the entire film was about. I know this is not really more of a review, but more of a tangent. And look, I try to concise, to make my thoughts concise and try to make like a video essay about it. The first time it was like a 15 page just rant about every like minute thing. I tried refining it, just selecting like one specific thing, but again, it just turned into a lot of rants. So I just decided I'll just film this. It'll be something. I don't know, but. God damn it, this film frustrates me. I can see the elements that people like and that they like think are really good. I can see them. But the problem is, is that they're not done either well or correctly. Again, like there's certain things that are either interesting or could be done well. But from a character and a story perspective, certain things are just mind boggling as to like, Again, like, a line of dialogue could have fixed this. Or, like, something like that. I'm sorry, guys. It's a very frustrating movie. It's not a bad movie, but... God, it makes me mad. Uh, this is a very rocky start to the DCEU. I'm not really a fan of this movie. I don't despise it, but it makes me mad. There are way worse superhero movies out there. Trust me. Way worse than this. Like, I love Venom to death, but God, it's a bad movie. But this, like, it frustrates me, cause, and it frustrates me so much, because I can see the potential here. There is something good here, but again, it's either just because of the writing or Snyder's direction, it all gets jumbled up together with things going in every which direction. Things just either go missing or aren't fully explored or explained, and Superman's character is just, like, non-existent. It just becomes a very frustrating mess that every time I see it, it the experience never improves. It just makes me more mad. And I'm sorry, Man of Steel fans. I'm sorry, Snyder fans. I don't love this movie. I think this movie has a lot of problems. And look, if you don't, if you think I'm wrong, that's fine. That's your opinion. If you don't want to actually listen to my complaints, that's fine. But if you stick with me till the end, hopefully you gain some kind of new experience, some new thoughts, some new ideology or something about this movie that maybe it'll make you think twice. I don't know. Either way, I just want you to go back, look at this film, think of it more critically, and look at specific things. Again, Superman, he's not really written as a character. There really is nothing to him, and it sucks. And I'm sorry, but yeah, his character is written very poorly. Not every character, but his especially, just, there's just nothing to him. They like to think there is, but there's nothing. But yeah, go back, rewatch Man of Steel, but think with an open mind and try to think critically about it and the things that it does. You might still love it, you might not, that's okay. Uh, but this is a very frustrating film. I'm going to give Man of Steel a 5 out of 10. It is such a mixed bag. But boy howdy, it's nowhere near as much of a mixed bag as Batman vs. Superman. I can't wait to talk about that one, folks. And whenever I talk about Batman vs. Superman, it is always the three-hour version, not the theatrical cut. It's always the Ultimate Edition. So just know that when I review that um, sometime before the Snyder Cut comes out. Because I got things to say about that movie. Oh boy, just you wait. <laughs> so this is my weird review tangent video about Man of Steel. What did you think? Did you agree with my thoughts or did you not? Do you hate my thoughts or not? I don't know. But anyways, like, share, subscribe, all the cool stuff. Comment down below other things. I don't know. What's your favorite flavor of pie? I don't know. I'm a bit tired and I'm a bit mad. Uh, but anyways, uh, yeah, do all that stuff I said before. And yeah, I guess I will see you all next time.